Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Mikey and in this video we're going to be comparing the old MacBook Pro 13 inch with the M1 chip to the newer 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip. Big shout out to my friend Anthony Youssef for letting me borrow his laptop for this video. Now this video is going to be a student focused review. There are plenty of videos online right now comparing the new MacBook Pros and seeing how well they perform, but that's not going to be the focus of this video. Now if you guys do also want me to make a video comparing the old MacBook Air to the newer 14 inch MacBook Pro, let me know down below in the comments and I can definitely work on doing that. Now, just to cut straight to the chase, because I know you guys have a lot of studying and a lot of assignments for midterms and exams coming up, my personal recommendation for which laptop you should get for school is the 13 inch MacBook Pro M1. Now, there are plenty of reasons why I think this laptop would actually be more beneficial than this one. And that's actually what I'm going to be explaining in this video today. Now, if you just came to the video to hear the verdict, then thank you guys so much for watching the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below. But if you wanna hear more on why I think the MacBook Pro, the 13 inch MacBook Pro is better than the 14 inch MacBook Pro, then keep watching to the end of the video. Now I'm gonna spit a lot of quick facts really quickly, so don't worry if you don't really understand it, but the MacBook Pro M1 has an eight core CPU and an eight core GPU, while the MacBook Pro 14 inch has an eight to 10 core CPU and a 14 to 16 core GPU. Now what does this mean exactly? GPU means graphics processing unit, and that is essentially very good if you're doing a lot of gaming, a lot of editing, a lot of engineering products, things like that where you need a lot of graphics this laptop would be beneficial for that. But those are not the only changes for this laptop. If you guys notice on the MacBook Pro 13 inch, there's actually two USB-C ports, one um, audio port, and then another two USB-C ports. So a total of four USB-C ports. But on the new 14 inch MacBook Pro, we have an HDMI port, we have a USB-C port, we have an SD card port, we have the fast charging port, we have two more USB-C ports and an audio output port. Now, what do these ports exactly mean? Well, you guys probably already know what's happening here, the HDMI and the SD card, but what is this fast charging port? Now, one thing that's really cool with the new laptops is that they have fast charging. You have the option if you pay an extra $20 for the 14 inch or it comes standard with a 16 inch to get the extra fast charging cable that actually allows your laptop to charge to 50% in only 30 minutes. Now, this is definitely very, very beneficial if you're always working on the go and you're not at school um, or you're not at home a lot, so you need your laptop to be fully charged, then this would be very beneficial for that. So in this case, I would say that this laptop has won in terms of the technological specifications and the different changes that they've made to the actual uh, ports. Now let's talk about the actual battery for the laptops. Now the MacBook Pro 13 inch has 17 hours of battery life, which already by itself, sorry, correction, the MacBook Pro 13 inch has 20 hours of battery life, which is actually a lot. Now the MacBook Pro 14 inch, which actually has a bit of a different screen. I want to show you guys that quickly. If you notice on the screen, there's a notch over here. I don't know if you guys already knew that. This is my friend Anthony, cause this is his laptop. But basically this laptop has 17 hours of battery life, which are three hours less than this laptop's battery life. So that is something definitely to consider, especially if you want to get a new laptop for school or anything like that, because you guys know that more battery life is definitely more beneficial for you especially if you're working on the go. You know, let's say you forgot your charger at home. If you have that extra three hours of battery life with the MacBook Pro M1, then that would definitely go a long way over time, especially considering that Apple products, usually their battery over time starts to get really, really bad. Now, another thing that's actually changed with the MacBook Pro 14 inch is that they actually don't have the touch bar anymore. If you notice all the way down here, they don't have the touch bar anymore. See, if you notice, there is no touch bar. It's strictly the keys, they switched it out. While in the old one, this is actually my sister's laptop. She let me use it for this video there is the presence of a touch bar right here. And you could see that all along the top of the screen. Now, is this beneficial or is this not beneficial to you guys? Well, in my opinion, the touch bar is, is useless. Like I rarely use it. If anything, maybe like, you know, once or twice every month, but everything that I use a touch bar for is actually already present in the new laptop on their keyboard in the top, like changing the volume, changing the brightness, uh, turning on, do not disturb, turning on Siri, all that stuff is in the 14 inch MacBook pro, but now it's just in regular keys. Now, is this going to be beneficial for you or not? Well, on the plus side, if you were to get the MacBook Pro uh, with the M1 chip, you still have access to the touch bar. Not only that, you also have that extra three hours of battery like I discussed before. Although you have less performance since the chip is not as good as the new one, you still have that extra battery and you still have the touch bar. Even though I think it's useless, at least you have the luxury of having it and deciding if you wanna use it or if you don't wanna use it. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is actually weight and portability. Now, this is a very big factor, again, if you're a student, because 
you're gonna be tugging around this freaking like massive laptop with you every single time you wanna go to school or if you're going to the library or if you're studying, hey Siri, just turn it on by accident. But if you're doing anything like that, you need to take your laptop with you. And you know that sometimes your backpack gets really, really heavy. So why have that extra load on you? So let me tell you how much each of these weigh. So the 14 inch MacBook Pro weighs three and a half pounds. Let me just double check. Oh my gosh. Hey Siri, turned on on both my laptop. On No, why do you turn on again? I keep saying it. Oh, now my I'm watch sorry. turned on. Yes, you are sorry. That's okay. So the 14 inch MacBook Pro, I just checked it right now. It's three and a half pounds or 1.59 kilograms, which is not very heavy. It, it, it's heavy. I agree. It is heavy. That's like lugging around one of those, you know, five pound dumbbells with you basically everywhere you go. But the MacBook Pro M1 chip actually is three pounds, half a pound lighter, and it's 1.36 kilograms. So you know, I don't know if that's a big factor for you, but it's definitely something to consider. So when it comes to weight and portability, the winner is the MacBook uh, Pro M1. Now, the next thing is efficiency. Now, if you guys have the MacBook Pro M1 right now, then you know that this laptop, basically, the fan never turns on ever. The MacBook Pro M1, when Apple released it, everybody was so shocked by how good it was because the fan never, ever turned on. And it was such a beast by itself. Now, the MacBook Pro 14 inch is no different. The fan also never turns on. The only difference is that now it has a better chip, so it's good at handling uh, even larger tasks. But I was talking to some of my engineering friends, one of my friends, his name is John. He was telling me about some programs that they use for engineering. He was telling me even when they use big engineering programs like uh, AutoCAD, uh, Revit, MATLAB, Inventor, even Xcode and Visual Studio Code that I personally use for uh, coding and programming, no, the fan never turned on when I had, you know, like uh, four different Safari windows open, Final Cut Pro open, uh, Visual Studio Code open, while I had like multiple desktop, the fan never turned on. So at the end of the day, they are both very, very efficient. Maybe if you're doing, you know, gaming, like really intense computer gaming, the 14 inch would be more beneficial and the fan would turn on much later. But at the end of the day, I mean, if you're a student and you're doing things for school, the fan is not gonna turn on for either of them. So if you're a pro user, I would give the win here, but if you're a student, I would give the win here. So I would say this round is technically equal because regardless, your fan will never turn on. Now, the next factor is the actual screen. And there's a couple things we're gonna discuss about the screen. The first thing is brightness. Now, I don't know if you guys know the units for brightness, but it's nits. So the MacBook Pro M1 goes up to 500 nits of brightness, while the MacBook Pro 14 inch is 1000 nits of brightness. So this is actually double what the MacBook Pro has, which is a lot actually, but the 500 nits of brightness is already very good by itself. This is enough for you to work outside and, and to be able to see your computer. So you know how sometimes when you go outside and you're using your phone or your computer and you see like, oh, the brightness for the screen is so low and you can't increase it anymore. Well, that's because the nits of brightness isn't as high as other computers. But again, if you're a student, you're mostly gonna be working inside, especially if you're in Canada, it gets really cold up here. You're gonna be working inside at home or in school. So the extra nits of brightness is kind of useless. However, since the MacBook Pro 14 inch does have a lot more nits of brightness, I do give the win to the MacBook Pro 14 inch. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about in, in screen as well is the actual camera. Now, you know the camera you guys use for zoom on your computer, like I showed you guys on the new MacBook Pro 14 inch, you'll see that there's a notch. So if you guys look at the top, you're gonna see a notch over here. Now, why is there a notch? And that's because of the front facing camera. Now, what they actually upgraded with the new laptops is that the front facing camera for the 14 inch laptop is 1080p quality while the old one was 720p. Again, the win comes to the MacBook Pro 14 inch for the screen, but I just wanted you guys to know so that if you guys are doing a lot of zoom calls, that is something to definitely consider if you want really good quality um, um, zoom phone calls or Microsoft Teams or whatever interactive video chat you guys are using for school the MacBook Pro 14 inch would definitely take the win for that because you do have much better quality. Now, the final thing I wanna talk about is actually price. Now, I'm, I'm sure you guys know, new computer, more expensive, which is facts, you guys could probably guess that. But if you guys were interested, I wanted to detail every single price, whether you're in the US or you're in Canada. And if you're a student, how you can actually get your MacBook Pros for cheaper uh, through kind of like a loophole that you could do with Apple uh, on their website. So what we're gonna talk about first is the MacBook Pro 13 inch. Now the MacBook Pro 13 inch in Canada retails for base price is uh, 16.99 Canadian dollars and in the US it's 12.99 dollars which are not very expensive. 16.99 is much cheaper than how much the laptops used to be a couple years ago. So 16.99 is a very solid price for this laptop. On the other hand, the MacBook Pro 14 inch is 24.99. So we're adding like what? What is that? Uh, $800 extra, which is a lot of money. $800 is like literally like a new iPhone SE. Like that, that is a lot of money that you're putting extra into this laptop. Well, in the US, it's actually $19.99. So it's $2,000. So again, it's an extra 700 US dollars. 
But if you're a student, again, you can get a discount on both of these laptops. So the MacBook Pro 13 inch, if you're a student in Canada, is $1,569. And if you're in the US, it's $1,199. You just go on Google and search up Apple student pricing. And the first link that pops up, click on it, and you can get the laptops for cheaper. While the 14 inch, if you're a student, is $2,309 and $1,849 if you're in the US. So definitely considerably cheaper if you are a student. Um, but I would recommend, again, going for the MacBook Pro M1 because of the price. If you are a student, you know how important it is to pay for tuition and for other expenses you have for groceries and rent and all that stuff. And there's really no use in paying an extra 800 Canadian dollars for this MacBook Pro 14 inch that would have a marginal difference in how you spend your days and your performance in uh, finishing your assignments as well as your classes and doing any engineering, math, science, biology, um, law, uh, physics, whatever projects you're doing. Regardless, both of these laptops are very, very good. So why, why pay the extra $800 for something that is way more expensive? So now we're gonna talk about my final thoughts. So the score, I think I think the final score was 3-3. I have no idea, I might be wrong. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen somewhere over here, what the final score was for each of them. Uh, but again, I would say I would go for the MacBook Pro M1 for three reasons. One, the battery life was much better, which is three hours more, which is a big factor. The laptop is much lighter, half a pound lighter, which is a big factor if you're carrying it on your backpack all around school. And and three, the price, it's 800 Canadian dollars cheaper or 700 US dollars cheaper, which is a very big factor when considering which laptop you wanna buy. Now that essentially sums up this video. I will be making future videos comparing these MacBook Pros to other MacBook Pros. So let me know if you guys are interested in that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this video is beneficial to you on which laptop you should purchase. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care and take it easy.